Hi everyone. How y'all doing? We're ready. You ready? I'm ready. You now. good? I told you once the camera came oh, on, okay. I was gonna be ready. All right. So uh, welcome to the couch. Um, I'm excited today. We do have our special guest in the building this afternoon, Mr. Rayshawn Miller. You know all that good stuff. Welcome to the couch, my friend. I appreciate you. That was in, impromptu. Man. Yes, it does. We, we always do impromptu I know, but that stuff. was that was cute though. Yeah. Okay. Good. So anyway, <laughs> thanks for joining us. We appreciate you. Okay. And we appreciate you guys tuning in as well. I guess we'll we're running a little bit behind, so I guess we'll dive right yeah. in. Let me share it. So okay, I'm gonna yeah, share it too. Definitely share, share it. this live. Definitely as always. Family, friends, everybody, just share it on your timeline. We appreciate it. Damien, what are we talking about today? So, Jackie, um, today we're going to kind of, um, I guess, follow up with what we were talking about last week as far as our, our session in regards to depression and more specifically uh, with adults um, as well as other mood disorders um, as far as like bipolar I guess we'll touch a little bit on mm -hmm. that as well um, we do have again Mr. Ray Sean Miller in the building um, and he's going to be here to discuss what he has going on a lot of exciting things like we said in our videos previously um, he's a huge you know mental health advocate for the community and does some some marvelous things in regards to um, you know reducing the stigma associated with mental health and advocacy and advocacy definitely so changing that face and you know uh changing how we look at mental health from a clinical perspective as well as from a personal perspective because most most therapists most people in the mental health field they say you have to be a little bit off to work in this population would you agree with that you think that's true yeah i don't usually agree with statements like that but that's why this is a couch damien has his opinion i have mine yeah. i do not agree with that you don't agree with that um, you don't think you got your own stuff your own ish i think we all have stuff right. but i don't think i think you were alluding with the hand gestures i took those no i, I would kind of way. i don't know because how you i don't, feel. I, I, don't that. Be, I don't believe in the word crazy okay but you so. you said off yeah, just off yeah, a little I, bit. Yeah, I want to discredit yeah. that from me. So right. I don't consider myself off. What I say is I have my own things that I wanted to work through. Mm -hmm. So you are, are you balanced most of the time? Yeah, I'm definitely not off, though. Off balance sometimes. Is that better? Is that more I, We'll agree forward? to disagree and then okay. move forward. <laughs> um, you see what you got yourself in right, 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 right. You know. I'm agreeing to disagree. I have moments where I feel like I have stuff to deal with and I'm glad that I have the training mm -hmm. to be able to handle that. Right. But I still depend on, you know, speaking with other professionals mm -hmm. about their opinion. You have to. Considering those issues. You have so. to. Gotta get more than one perspective. Definitely. But mine is the only one that really matters in the long run. So, hey, hey girl. Hey Tasha, how you doing? So, um, so I guess we'll just dive right in just a little bit. Um, as far as with Mr. Miller over here, we just want to get a little. We just went off for a minute. We back. We back. But um, I just want for the people that don't know Rayshawn, um, just give us a little bit of background as far as yourself, professionally, personally, whatever it is that you want to feed to the people as far as. Um, you know what you bring in, in this particular field uh rashawn miller mental health advocate and founder of eustress inc which is a nonprofit to raise mental health awareness in black and brown communities um do a lot of stuff in the community when it comes down to addressing issues that we don't necessarily talk about mm -hmm. um just because you know it's a huge stigma in our community but mm -hmm. then um we just get to the point where we feel like we need to hide certain things that mm -hmm. go on in our in our families. Exactly, uh, and that's hurting us. So it's something that uh, really is hit close to me, right. and then I see it in other people, and so I mm -hmm. you know try to do whatever I can to help other people. Awesome, awesome. And, and like I said, he does a lot in the community as far as speaking to the youth, um, organizing different um, nonprofit uh, programs. Uh, seminars, walks. You had the mental health gala. When was that back? That in was in May. May. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, I, yeah. I saw. I, I hate I missed it. I, I was out of town that weekend. I hate I missed it. But 
that's what second or third year. It was a, uh, no, the gala is the first year, but uh, this is the third year for the walk. Wow. Yeah. yeah wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we having a gala this year? In 2019. Okay, I love yeah. a gala. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Actually, we're going to announce it this week though, for the I save the date. Gala. So it's going to be the third I'm weekend in May. Some financial support for the walk. Okay. Okay. The All walk right. is not that long, man. Walking. It's not that long. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it real. We keep it real here. I don't know if I'll be walking. Is it two miles or more? No, it's a mile. All right, I'll come yeah. to the walk. <laughs> Pull down some not to make right. it about me, but I'll be there. She made okay, it about I'm us. sorry. Go ahead. Just so. What's going on, Dr. Jasper? K, what up with you? What's good? What's good? What's good? Hey, KJ. <laughs> We got your people over busy here. Busy guy, but he took the yeah, time. Yeah, man, I appreciate it. I took appreciate him stopping by the other week and blessing us with his presence. Definitely, I appreciate that. We appreciate that here on the couch. Okay. So. So 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 diving a little bit further in, I guess, uh, with Mr. Miller over here. What would you say are like some of the events that led you to want to become a therapist or just to be in the mental health field? Uh, well, honestly, I started off dibble dabbling in the mental health field. Uh, my aunt used to own a group home. So that okay. was when I was in high school, man. I used to go help out around the group mm -hmm. home and stuff. Right. Uh, but then, um, going to, when I went to college, my sophomore year, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Okay. Uh, was actually hospitalized in a straight jacket and, and in a padded room. So mm -hmm. I was in there for a couple of weeks. Okay. And, okay. um, once I got out, ended up actually moving to Charlotte. Cause I withdrew from school, moved to Charlotte, and I actually started seeing Kendall. Okay. Uh, Kendall helped me sure. out through um, a lot of my issues just from the you know the initial onset. Right. And right, once he right. got me to the point where he couldn't take me any further, I trusted him enough to take me to refer mm -hmm. me to so a, nice. someone else to actually mm -hmm. get the other help that I needed. Right. 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 Um, Things went well, but then once I got well, I stopped taking my meds. I stopped going to therapy. Because I'm okay and then, now, Yeah, right? yeah, I'm good. Right. I'm good. I'm right. good. You know, yeah. I don't, and that's I don't what need... usually happens. Right, right, like, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. So I said I'm good now and ended up um, going to um, going back to school. Mm -hmm. But then I started self-medicating with alcohol. I was drinking a fifth of tequila every other day. I did that Ooh. for like four years. Wow. Do you think because it was easier to mask what was happening because alcohol is looked at as socially acceptable? Um, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, friends yeah, yeah, get drink, yeah, they yeah. drink socially. Right. Right. So right, if I'm right, doing right, it with right. them, right. They, they may not notice, it might be easier for me, I don't need other things, I can just use that. Looking back on it, yes, it was okay. easier that way, but at that point in time, I was just trying to run away from pain. So it wasn't the point about me masking it. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to tell anybody what was going on, but I felt, I thought that it was me drinking every day was right. happening, mm -hmm. which I knew it wasn't. Mm -hmm. uh, ended up attempting suicide three times, overdosed on pills twice, and the last time I put a gun in my head and pulled the trigger, and it jammed on me. Mm -hmm. So that's when my real wake up call came. It wasn't mm -hmm. the hospital. It wasn't you know any it was that last suicide attempt. Right, right. Um, that's what like Sean, you got to get back on your meds. You got to get back into therapy. Did that, and um, once I got better this time, I was able to see that certain people in my life that were close to me, mm -hmm. they were dealing with certain things too. Like my boy, he used to smoke an ounce a day, you know, and so wow. I knew I was drinking every day, so right. I had to check him. Like, right. you know, why are you smoking every day? You right. know, so things like that. Um, so you started wanting to help the people around you, right? Because you were right. in tune with your issue. Exactly. You saw exactly. they were having issues. Exactly. Okay. Right. Exactly. Recognition. Right. right. And so then um, started to realize, uh, Kendall, he definitely had a major influence on that. I, I started to realize there are not a lot of black men in this field. It's not. Right. Um, so that's what prompted me to actually go get my, my degree in therapy and now I'm getting my PhD in psychology. So, congrats, congrats, yeah, so congrats. yeah, just grinding, working, uh, yes, you know, man. running a yes. couple of businesses and yeah, that's it. So, so we're going to definitely dive into those businesses because they are definitely influential and he does a lot, like I said, for the community, for the state, definitely. So do you feel like Damn. dealing with like your own battles as far as like with bipolar in the past, as far as your mental health symptoms and things like that, do you feel like it gave you a better insight um, and allowed you to be more empathetic for people who are dealing with mental health issues? Oh yeah, definitely. Most definitely. Because of the fact I've been there. Yeah. I know what it's like to, you sitting in your room, you're locked up in your room for two, three weeks and don't want to go nowhere. Right. You don't even want to get out of the bed. Right. Like, I went through a period where I didn't, I didn't even want to eat. I lost mm. like 25 pounds over six weeks. Wow. 
Oh, six so, weeks is a long period of time for not to be eating. 25 pounds is a lot of pounds. Oh, yeah, that's what yeah, I'm saying. That's definitely. A lot. <laughs> I mean, what I'm saying is, wait, what? I, okay, let me, let me interject. What I'm saying is, okay, this was, you experienced your symptoms on a grandiose scale, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. Right, like, right, maybe right, for right, some right, of the right, people right, right. watching, they go through bouts of depression like most of us do where we have moments, maybe for a week or two right, weeks where our right, friends right, pick right, up right. like, no, we haven't yeah. seen you yeah, or you're not eating. Exactly. But most of us get hungry at right. some point where we're like, eh, you know, I was uh, mad about something, but it's not that bad, bad not to right, eat. Right, right, so, right. you know, people start eating. So when I said, that's a long time, I saw you took a long pause looking at me. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I was talking <laughs> nah, out loud. Cool. Like, whew. I, I mean, I swear off food because I'm depressed. But then I'm like, you know, that new quarter factor at McDonald's. I'm thinking about it now and I have it. I'm just being honest. You're killing, but you're killing yourself. It's sometimes yeah. how we pull ourselves back when our issues are not that right, severe. Right, 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 you right, know? right, right. Never right. mind. Right. Wow. But no, so uh just going through those periods, man. So I, I know what it's like and I know mm. what it's like to feel alone. Right. Mm -hmm. You're not necessarily alone. You know, we have people there that we'd be not willing lonely, to help you. But you're, right, you yeah. feel alone, yeah. and you you don't feel like you have anybody that you can talk to. Right, because you're too scared to really explain what's going on in your head. Mm -hmm. So my thing was when my 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 um, diagnosis, I was uh, diagnosed with bipolar one disorder with psychotic features. So I was hearing voices. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't tell nobody what was really going on in my head. I was right. hearing three distinct voices in my head, in oh. addition to my own thoughts. Right. Who would want to listen to me or that? Do you feel like it was more so out of the fear of them not understanding? I didn't that? understand myself at first. True. 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 Like True. I didn't understand myself because right. just even from my background, like I was the man coming out of high school. Mm -hmm. I heard. So he, <laughs> you, An athlete, right? <laughs> you doing that athlete? Research, research, right? Oh, I did a little bit now. I mean, you know, I heard. You know, I mean, but like, and then even when I got to college, man, I, I still had a lot of friends and stuff. So, I mean, I mm -hmm. mean, it wasn't like I was shy or anything like right. that. Right. So, but to, for me to start going through those types of things, I'm like, first of all, I'm thinking not me. I right. can't, can't be dealing with these types of things. Exactly. Um, so, I definitely know what that feels like. Mm. Okay. And then, you, and then I know what it feels like to constantly try to put on a mask. And you're wearing a mask in front of people to make sure that they don't worry about you and that exactly. they're not looking at you strange. Do you still do that now? Do you think sometimes? Sometimes, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, to be honest with you, being a black man in America, I wear a mask every time I step outside. Yeah, that's what I was getting at. Yeah, I too. Yeah, all right. I wear, I wear a I mask every day. I was waiting for you to say no. So, really? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I expected that. No. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, I mean, that adds to, I think it adds to symptoms i think it on top of symptoms mm -hmm. that are already there yes. then there's concerns about when you adjust yourself and when you don't adjust yourself enough what's the consequence when you step outside of that box yeah that Protective box that box. people mm -hmm. oh we put ourselves in the box sometimes mm -hmm. but more so oh, yeah, yeah, society yeah, yeah, yeah. does yeah. definitely we put ourselves in the box when we're with our boys we put ourselves in our box when we were in relationships we put ourselves in the box just in general, but then, you know, the outside forces as well, like... Yeah, I'll get to the relationship thing later. That's one of the questions I have in addition to what you've got on this paper. Okay. We'll talk about so, that later. Go so, ahead. So, so in, in your opinion, Rayshawn, like, just over the, the span of you being in treatment and then coming out and becoming a therapist and being a, a force in this mental health field, what, what do you feel like is kind of like the main reason why... More specifically, African Americans and brown people like shy away from treatment. We don't know enough about it. Yeah. We don't know enough. We don't even know enough about the different diagnoses mm -hmm. to even seek treatment. We right. don't know what depression looks like. We don't know what anxiety looks mm -hmm. like. We don't know what this stuff. How all we know is gritted and buried. Yep. Yeah. We know. Oh well, our ancestors suffered through this, and we did through this. We like, we put we put the world on our back and continue going. Right. So that's what we know. So that's what we feel like we got to continue to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there are things out here to help us to make our load a little bit lighter. A little bit lighter. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. They did Absolutely. that stuff and they had to. Right. They had a lot of stuff choice. we put up with, we don't have to deal with to that to that degree. Exactly. Yeah. You're exactly right. Okay. Any feedback on that one? No, you did a good job with that. <laughs> I have confidence in your ability to lead this. <laughs> So, uh, 
let's let's change a little bit of topic because we was getting kind of serious a little bit. Sometimes we get serious, but most times we want to make sure we're having fun <laughs> I'm here and to we're laughing us. and all that good stuff. So um, one good thing that that Ray Sean definitely um, has and that he puts out into the community is his nonprofit organization called You Stress. Mm -hmm. um, what was the premise behind you developing um, that particular? Nonprofit organization and what do you guys provide? Um, well, I got into it just because, um, well, first of all, the name Eustress means good stress. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's, it all really comes down to our perception. A right. lot of times we want to, we consider stress to be something negative, but right. it can help you grow. Mm -hmm. And it's Absolutely. all about, especially when it comes down to a mental health challenge, it's mm -hmm. all about how you perceive these certain things. Exactly. And how, if you perception. learn yourself, you can continue to live and continue to thrive outside right. of anything that's going on. Right. You develop your support system and you, you do what you have to do to be better and mm -hmm. you can continue to do everything. Yeah. Um, so I developed it um, really, the first event that I actually really had was, um, I did a mental health awareness walk at, um, in Chapel Hill for homecoming. Okay. And um, I actually had the fourth annual one coming up the first weekend in November. Okay. So started Look doing those. Another walk. Um yeah, I do three I do three a year. Okay. So I do one here in Charlotte. So I do one in my home my home places. Okay. Charlotte's home, Bertie County is home and Chapel Hill is home. Okay. okay. So I do that every year. Wow. I uh, want to expand to Atlanta and then D C next year as well. Okay. But you know, those are in the works. Right. Um so we do those awareness walks. So it's it's not just we just walking. We wanna teach people different um, signs and symptoms. We wanna teach people ways they can address their mental health challenges. Right. Ways wow. that they can do uh different things to protect their mental health. So we do a yoga mm -hmm. session, uh wow. hosted by my homegirl yeah. Danielle. She does so we start off the morning with yoga. Okay. Um we do a, a lot of we do dance um sessions as well. Wow. Um we also host Men, men's introduction to yoga. Mm -hmm. uh, so a, a lot, lot of men, men not, right. not into, a lot of men not right. into it, but yo, right. but it's it's right. useful definitely. Right. I do it. Yeah, okay. yeah. Not, I do not yoga. as yeah. often as I need to, but I definitely. <laughs> so yes. let me ask this. Let me ask this. Uh, not to cut you off, but piggybacking off the yoga. Do you believe you know they're they're trying to do a lot of stuff with yoga now and like implementing meditation in schools, mm -hmm. which is something I have known about for a couple of years and really been a fan of. Mm -hmm. More so trying to teach kids when I'm doing sessions with kids that are in school right. of how to meditate and be mindful. Mm -hmm. Do you believe like I guess where do you stand on mindfulness with reducing symptoms of depression and what you think about how that impacts reducing any symptoms that you may have from day to day? Man, I, I meditate every day. That's, that's a part of my morning ritual. I have to get at least 15, 20 minutes into meditation every single day because with that, I'm able to be more in tune with myself and be able to learn myself. That's one of the key things when it comes down to addressing the mental health challenge. Right. Learn who you are. You can't live, yeah, you can't, you can't live up to everybody else's expectations. Right. expectations. You have to get to the point where I don't like doing this or I don't like being around this person. This person pisses me off. Right. You know, like this person is not good for me, mm -hmm. mentally, physically, or whatever. Yeah, and you have to remove. I, <laughs> I think we all have some of those. Types I was talking of about one when we yeah. came in here. Anyway, I need to meditate. That's what I should have done. You That's gotta, it. Thank you. you. Take the power. I recommended something else, but I'm not going to talk about what I recommended. Oh, I already know. Okay, I know. So I know. We, will, we will intervene. Yes. And <laughs> you're giving them too much power. All right. I did. Right now. I did. I'm tr I'm um, letting it go, and I'm and focusing not, on something. They're positive. not even focused on you right now. I'm not focusing on the baritone. I'm, it's hard to. <laughs> <laughs> As a woman, it's hard to focus. I'm like, yes, that's, yeah. What you say? What? I don't know. She's I'm being mindful right, right now. Like oh, very mindful. She's being very <laughs> mindful. That's what people are thinking when they listen. To, that's why we had so many views. There were like 17. It was like 17. You know, usually it's not. The numbers fluctuate, but the yeah. women they want to hear it. So ask him another question. I'm looking out. They want to hear what he got to say. So okay, so definitely. Um, <laughs> see, you ain't got me right. Right, right, right. to the baritone. How does she focus? Go I ahead, it's real. No, I mean, but that's I, real. That's what they think. I mean, am I telling you? That's why they like, like. Look, that's why they sending all the high emojis. Oh, we never had that Lord. many women doing like this. Oh my gosh. All right, so 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 move. <laughs> my, my, that's my that's sister. That's what I'm saying. Hey, girl. Hey. Um, she's she's laughing at us right now. Thing. But so I mean, I mean, I I've known because I've actually read the book. But Mr. Ray Sean, he actually authored a book 
um, entitled Injured Reserve, a Black Man's Playbook to Managing or Manage Being Sidelined by Mental Illness. Mm -hmm. So, Rayshawn, give, give, give us a premise on that, um, where the concept came from. I guess being an athlete myself, and I kind of understand um, playbook and injured reserve and all that, but for the viewers and for Ms. Jackie, she may not know, um, but <laughs> give, give us a premise uh, of, of the book and... And uh, let us know what what was your motivation behind that. Um, one thing, man. So, for me, one of my techniques to learn myself is journal. I journal mm -hmm. every day too. Okay. Uh, I guess later on we can go through my regimen what I do in the morning. But uh, so I journal, and a lot of that, a lot of what's in my book came from journal writings. And okay. then, but then also I wanted to translate into a point where it's not just me sharing my story. Right. But it's also right. me helping the individual that's reading the book. Okay. So that's why I uh, called it a playbook. So because at the end of each chapter, I asked the reader questions. You know, what things piss you off? What things, who can help you through certain situations? Mm -hmm. um, what environments do you need to be in when some right. things go wrong? So right. that's what I do. So to get them to start thinking like that. Right. I didn't have that when I was going through whatever I was going through. Right. You know, I didn't know who I needed to talk to. I didn't know, um, you know, just going outside and being in the sun for a little bit can elevate your mood. Absolutely. You know, so I didn't, I didn't I do, know. I do, I do that. I do that every morning. If like, you know me, you, 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 you go out and I sun. go out. First thing I do, Except besides like washing my face and brushing my teeth, like as soon as I do that, I walk outside. That's why you look so toasty every time I see you. I be like, damn, I'm on vacation. It's not that. It's that you get some sun every hey, look, day. At least like 15 minutes. You know what? Now I know what to you do. Have to. Okay. Like, okay. I, I hadn't thought about that. But that's the point about, I mean, even I if you're going outside, you know, with no shoes on and just stepping in the grass, like getting grounded, yeah. mm -hmm. like small things, it's small things, you're laughing. But I see, I, I like, was laughing. Yeah, I cannot but, deny it, they but, saw it. I mean, yeah, small I, things like that. I'm from Chicago. So the first thing I think is not to go outside and put my feet in the grass. I think it's a, well, it's I'm a from cultural the country. country. Well, we know that, by the way, you saw that, so I'm yeah. just saying, I can tell by his accent, he's from the country, but I just don't think to do that. But now I will have to think about that. The mm -hmm. sun... Walking outside and just... Well, you're from Chicago, but you're in Charlotte, so... I knew I was... Yeah. Well, I understand that now. Oh, That's now. personal. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> I heard I heard Oprah say the other day, look, I saw something, a little clip, and she had said that she spends 30 minutes a day walking, and she's not trying to exercise, and she doesn't have an objective mm -hmm. beside just walking. Mm -hmm. yeah. She's not aiming to think about or process anything while she's walking. Right. She just starts. Right, right, and right, then, right, right. You know, 30 minutes, and she says it makes her feel more fulfilled. Right, right. And that's yeah. one of those mindfulness practices mm -hmm. that you're just engaging in, wanting to heighten your senses, whether right. that's touch, smell, you want to mm -hmm. smell the air, you want to see the trees, the. Well, just the paying attention to yeah. your surroundings, man. Exactly. We're always distracted. Absolutely. So uh, is <laughs> this is not a distraction. Don't make the people think that I'm not paying attention. I'm reading the comments. Didn't we agree in the uh, beginning? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. I am on edge today uh, because of work. So, uh, Damien, don't play with me today. <laughs> but no, but yeah, the premise yeah. of the book, man, is is me sharing my story. Like even mm -hmm. even I even go into detail about one of my suicide attempts. Okay. Um, and my thought process when I was going through those things, right. but then how I ended up getting better. Right. So that's the premise of the book, and just to help a reader. Okay. Well, for the viewers, again, let them know where they can find that book at, definitely. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Definitely a good one. Yeah, you can check out my book. It's actually on Amazon, and you can look up my website, rwenshaun.com. You can get the book there. And then also through Eustress, what we're doing, we're running a campaign now. Where we're, it's called Pathway to Eustress. Okay. We're going to get 100,000 copies of the book. <laughs> to 100,000 inmates across the nation wow. because I know a lot of um, a lot of people that are locked up right now shouldn't be in there. So can no. we sponsor them? Sure. Okay. So yeah. that's what we can do. Yeah. So, so, so the maybe thing we is, should put that out there if yeah. you want to sponsor an inmate for the book. Right, then right. You, you need to, you Absolutely. know. Absolutely. Yeah. So you can sponsor yeah. a book for $10 um, and then also you can, if you have a particular inmate that you want to mm -hmm, send it to, mm -hmm. like you can give me their, their contact information okay. or their, you know, their inmate number and then the address and all of that. Right. I'll sign it for them and send it to them. Okay. Most definitely. Yeah. So I definitely do have some. Yeah, we, 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 that could definitely we all do, man. Them, yeah. And that's, that's, that's a sad Truth. Sad reality. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Yo, it's the sad truth. But I mean, it is, <clears throat> but I want to do whatever I can to help them out as well. Just to, for one, I've had people that's been locked up, and I send them, I write them notes, mm -hmm. and then it was like, "Yo, you don't know what that did for mm -hmm. me, right?" <clears throat> because 
you can lose touch with the outside world. Mm-hmm. And the phone call is cool, but you know, for somebody to sit down and take time to write something to you, mm-hmm. it's going to be completely different. I mean, think about it's the minute that we get. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I like attention too. So, <laughs> of course I'm you just do. Just saying, that's what it is. Go, Jackie. Go. Um, go. Where are we at? It, it's it's all we, we don't. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to take us to something so not, serious. Right, right, right. It's not structured. I want to talk about. Okay, right? I want to talk about a specific the specific interview that you did with Dr. Jasper on the Breakfast Club because. Mm-hmm. I watched it. Was it only one or was it? Yeah, it was only one. Okay, I felt like there was maybe two, but maybe I watched it so many times, and I picked up actually different things each time I watched it. I we spoke to Dr. Jasper about vulnerability. Actually, mm-hmm. it was something mm-hmm. we touched on, which right. I know you were present for watching. Uh, vulnerability with black men, and then he was like, you know, this is with everyone, and this is with, you know men period and then across the mm-hmm. board he got into history right. the historic um meaning behind vulnerability in the black community and things like that i wanted to know if you had anything to add on to that it's tough being vulnerable man i mean it's it's tough to show someone your cards and then because you think they're either going to use them against you mm-hmm. or you don't want to be hurt so are you thinking everyone or are you talking about just friendships and relationships everyone. are we talking about everyone your family everyone i mean Think about it, even with your own relationships that you have with people. Who are you uh, completely 100% with? <laughs> it's rhetorical. Mm. No, it's not rhetorical. It. No. I, it's well, like, serious. It's, it's okay, very well, few. but Damien, you know me, so let's just put it out there. I would, I would assume that most of the people that I'm close to in my life, I'm actually 100% with. Um, when you ask me if something's wrong, do I hold back when something's wrong? Or do I tell you, hey, there's things going on. Either I, I get into it right. or I say, hey, now's not the time, but I'll talk. We talk later. Okay. But even with that, how long did it take you to get to that point? Right. Have you always been that way? No, I, I haven't always been that way. But learning myself through counseling other people has assisted me with mm-hmm. recognizing mm-hmm. my own triggers, my own lack of ability to communicate effectively in mm-hmm. order to self-heal. Right. And I realize right. now... I have a different type of readiness to just divulge, hey, this is what it is. Right. You either get on board or you jump off. Right. And right, so right, if right, you'd right. like to jump off, fine. But if you'd like to be on board, I don't mind sharing with you that occasionally right. I feel depressed. Right. And my close friends know that. And I like that I tell them that because they know, they sense it now. Mm-hmm. And they can say, hey, you can, you're kind of starting to sound like this. Maybe you need to start doing this. Right. Maybe we need to go out now. Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. like, remember we talked about that, the Fab Five. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. A couple weeks ago, we yes. talked about having those core people, right, that right, core group, right, right. who you are honest with, mm-hmm. who can assist you with digging out the hole. And yes. so I am almost always at least 85, 90%. I don't want to <laughs> say but it, took, but it took time. It took but then time. it also took, it was a result of you being able to counsel other people. Mm-hmm. Educate myself. But you think about the majority of the community that, exactly. for one, don't have that ability to counsel other people. Mm-hmm. Right. A lot of times we're giving advice to people and we don't know what we're talking about. A lot of times so, they try to counsel other people. Right. And so it's the it's blind leading the blind. Mm-hmm. So, but then also we just don't talk about mental health issues. Mm-hmm. Right. A lot of times we compartmentalize all of our relationships. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We tell certain people this. We tell certain. I, I, I do it myself. Oh, I know. Just yeah. by the way you respond to text messages. <laughs> Really? Yeah, it's really? real. It's no, on. No, yo, okay? yo, yo, it's yeah, on. Yo, yo, yo. He cuts it off where he needs to cut it, and then you know he revisits when it's necessary. I mean, it's obvious compartmentalized, and that's just not. But that's. The, but now also with that, it's a point of time, and sure. I got a million other things. Monetization. Going on. You're so busy. So. So so so, so the key <laughs> thing, what what we're getting to is is. In order for you to be vulnerable, you have to be mm-hmm. self-aware mm-hmm. and be in tune with your emotions and how you're feeling to actually express that to someone else right. and have the confidence in that person mm-hmm. that it's going to be there or they're going to at least provide that support. Mm-hmm. And I think um, just to interject, mm-hmm. it's also getting to the point where if that person doesn't provide you what you need or want, you not get discouraged and to completely and shut stop. down from right. everybody. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Because everyone's not equipped to give you what you need and everyone's not in tune with how to assist you with exactly. what you need. Exactly. Sometimes we, you throw some mm-hmm. stuff out there and people be like, 
what am I supposed to do with it? And we have different levels of relationships and some people just not on that particular level. Right, and we right. have to be able to um, have that discernment on, okay, who do I divulge this to? Because I know uh, John over here, he, he's not going to be on that level. He's going right. to give me some... some book, Right, yes. right, 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 right. And tell me to go go smoke a joint or something like that. To something that I don't need. Wait, that's right. A, that's a, that's something that I I want to piggyback off on because you know wh while we do the show, you know the platform with this is that we tackle things as they pop up. Mm -hmm. And what I see in my clients and my friends is that they don't use their natural discernment. Mm -hmm. for this is not the person to talk to about this right. to protect themselves right, right. and then right. just to go a different avenue with absolutely it, right like i have or people, they go to social media and uh, okay <laughs> that's <laughs> <a> whole, <laughs> yeah and i have feelings <laughs> about that too because i feel that it allows negativity to spew on you in your life and mm -hmm. you've opened the door yeah. i i can't tell you how many friends i've texted and said I saw what you posted. You need to stop that. Why are you doing that? We can talk right, about right, it. Right, you right, know, right. you can call me. I don't want to see you telling the world that you feel like crap. It's going to draw crap to you. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why we don't understand that when most, yeah. you know, I know the general public mostly believes in the power of attraction. Like you attract what you put out. Exactly. And that is no exception. But yeah, that's my major issue is that we go to people who we know are not equipped in certain ways. Mm -hmm. We go to the person with relationship problems with our relationship problems. I mean, we do that. The person that makes bad decisions. Or not even in a relationship. Not in one and ain't had, had one. And, and <laughs> no, no, I never no, had no, a no, successful one. No clue when right. one's right. coming. Because, I mean, right. it's cool like to go to that person that's not in a relationship, but they have to have a track record. The and track record is what I'm talking about. And self-aware of, okay, like, I know my issues and my next relationship, I'll be able to kind of sure. at least communicate and express that to my partner or what my shortcomings are. Instead of just somebody that's going to be completely honest. I was going to say, right? Right. I have a core group that's completely honest, yes. and it's two or three. Yeah. Yeah. And I can depend on them. I revolve it because I don't want to overwhelm one. I talk a lot. I don't want to overwhelm. You need to find you a therapist. I, okay, first of all. I'm going to check I'm, you. I, I'm, I'm going to check I you. Do right need to find, no, I do need to find a therapist, and a lot of my friends are on me about that because I deal with a lot of stress in different <laughs> realms of my life. And I am, some of it I can compartmentalize well, and other times I don't. So I'm working on that. My insurance is changing and that's why I haven't found one because I don't want to start one, stop it. It's not an excuse. I don't want to start one, stop it, but the insurance is uh, changing. Oh, you saw my face. Soon. Okay, soon. Right, well, right. Because exactly. we, <laughs> we know I left the job. Don't try to be brand new because we were there together. I left. Okay, so the insurance is changing. Damien is obviously <laughs> trying to front <laughs> on me. But anyway, I want to find one. That's something that I want to do. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh, yeah, of course I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah. That's Why not? what we do. It's fine. Right. It's called gentle confrontation. Right. <laughs> it's cool. Like I said, you got to have somebody to be honest with you and yeah, check, right? I know. Thanks for that. Now I can't read. I don't know where we are. <laughs> it's your it's, it's, not, it's not structured at all. I like, see that. So, so, <laughs> so, but, so. Oh, but no. So, I guess a segue in. For you talking about insurance and yeah. things, so with Eustress, I'm opening up a mental health triage clinic yeah. where I want to actually provide services to individuals that don't have the ability to get those services. You're going to open in Charlotte? Yes. So the first one will be in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. um, actually taking on the first 10 clients uh, at the beginning of October. Oh. And um, the goal is to not only give them care and give them uh, care for up to a year for as far as therapy, but then give them culturally competent care. Mm. So do you take volunteer services? Like are these are therapists helping you that are volunteering? Mm -hmm. or? Mm -hmm. oh, okay, I'll volunteer. I will too, mm -hmm. absolutely. Oh, we know you will, that's why I look right at you. <laughs> that was your cue. We will volunteer. <laughs> but no, but, that's the, but the goal is though, really though, and even outside of just um, having volunteers is also creating a structure for um, it's going to be beneficial for the therapist and for the client. Right. You know, right. because I, I know what it's like to have to go to a client, chase a client down or ride out to the house and they don't even be there. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. actually setting up structure so that right. they can be compensated for right. it as well. Okay. So, but no, it's all, yeah. But no, the clinic is, is going to be open up, taking the first 10 clients um, October 1. That's oh, awesome. Yeah. I commend you for that. Yes, for sure. absolutely. It's one absolutely. Thing to work so look out for that, you guys. <laughs> definitely, if you're in the Charlotte area, definitely look out for that because I do get messages on a regular basis 
you know, ask me, you know, as far as price and insurance and all that stuff. And that's like the last thing I really want to worry about. Right, 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 right. Right. But you cold. still got to eat. Yeah, you know still I mean? got to yeah. eat. Yeah. Well, yeah. I do self-pay only, so I don't have to worry about co-pays. Whatever is, comes in just comes in. Your okay. friend, what was it, Marisha? Marisha, that's my best she friend said, from childhood. Oh, she Jackie. Because oh, she knows me well. She's that's part of the group. She's uh, part of the core group. That's what I was about to say. Oh, okay, Jackie. I don't, okay. So you're probably like, yeah, you need to go get a therapist. It's a hashtag. Ooh. <laughs> hey, we cracking up in here today. So, so, so move. <laughs> So moving on, you like the attention, remember? Hey, I'm ready no matter hey. what it is. Yeah, that's all. Where are we? Okay, we, we are so, 15 minutes so, on time. So, so, so in regards to mental health treatment, this goes for you as well, Jackie, and myself. I guess we can all chime in on this. Where, where do you see mental health feel, the mental health feel in general? Where, where is it going in the future? Do you, do you feel like we're progressing hmm. uh, culturally? As a people, do you do you feel like there are some some gaps that that continue to widen out, or where we're disproportionately, you know, accessing treatment? Where where do you see it going? Man, that's that's a layered question, bro. Yes, <laughs> that, that, uh, that's one that can probably lasts a whole hour yeah. at least. Um, I would guess one thing culturally, I think we're progressing when it comes down to the advocacy part because right. we have a lot more people talking about it. Mm -hmm. But then also what concerns me is not only is you have people talking about it, but what are we actually doing, doing. about it? Right, right. So what services right. are there for these individuals mm -hmm. that actually, you know, have, you know, come in and talk and say they need help. As, as even when I come, when I go do speeches and talk about mental health, I make sure that I'm there to speak with the individuals. So it's mm -hmm. not just no motivational speech. It's right. actually, you know, I, I have the degree to actually help you too. Exactly. Um, exactly. Cause you have to have that social responsibility to mm -hmm. be able to, I mean, you bring up these, these emotions in people. You yes. can't just let them sit in it. Yeah. You, you, yeah. Leave, you, yeah, know. you can't you just, just leave. leave. Yeah. You got to provide them with some right. type of resources. Right. Right. Um, but culturally, yes, we're starting to talk about it more, which is, it's a, it's great to see. Um, as far as, you know, a lot of different bills and stuff are being passed when it comes down to Medicaid and all of those insurances and all of mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to get tough, man. Yeah. It, it, it really is going to mm -hmm. get tough. Um, just from an academia standpoint, we don't have enough black clinicians. We don't have a lot enough black male clinicians. Absolutely. Um, as far as individuals wanting to go get their degree in counseling and become a therapist because some people just don't see it as a viable option to, you know, make it um, a career. Mm -hmm. But then also with that, you got to think about the research aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Our people are not researched enough to figure out what really works for us and what issues right. do we really have. Right. That's why I see a lot of misdiagnosis of individuals. Me and you work a together. Lot. You, you know, we've seen our young black men. Oh, they, I see bit. Oh, I mean, geez. but I know I've been in the office with him and me and him okay, talking I'm not about in certain the office. things. <laughs> Let me excuse me, excuse me, <laughs> boss lady. I'm not Sheesh. in the office, y'all. Let me retrieve. But no, but I'm just saying. Yeah, thank you. That's right. <laughs> but no, but we've seen right. like young black boys and they're diagnosed with ODD or ADHD, exactly. but then they're on the the clinician that, pro that provided the assessment. They only got the information from the teacher. Right. Mm -hmm. So like, but then we if we talk to the kid, they're saying all of this is going on in the house. Or when they're getting out of school, they're managing themselves until twelve o'clock at night. Exactly. So of course they're not going to listen to an adult when they're in school. Right. They don't have anybody else right. governing them. So why exactly. they gonna do that? So just that culturally competent care. So mm -hmm. like, yeah. So it's it's like I said, it's a layered thing. We need more black researchers because you can't. It's gonna be hard to get research done without somebody that looks like you. Right. Because if you don't look like you, if they don't look like you and they come into your hood, you're not going to open up about anything. Absolutely. Now, I think I posted, uh, who was it? Taraji was on the Breakfast mm -hmm, Club and mm -hmm, she said mm -hmm. that she, she's actually seeing a therapist and she wouldn't see nobody, I guess that was of the other right, 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 right. Because she felt like they would not see her as her, like as being a black woman. So right. definitely... Uh, uh, that's a huge hurdle that a lot of families have to kind of uh, get across or try to get across on a regular basis as far as access and treatment because you'll walk into an office and there's someone that doesn't look like you. Right, 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 right. I and have, I'm not I gonna have something to add to that. Sure. So, I mean, okay. I have seen, <clears throat> I've seen a couple different therapists since I was 15 years old. I saw a woman when I was 15, we spoke about this, mm -hmm. that I felt like she didn't give me what I needed. 
But I haven't, I've never seen a black woman therapist. Mm. I had never sought it out just to see one. I've always looked more at credentialing and then spoke with the person, told them my issues and mm -hmm. asked them how they thought they could help me. Mm -hmm. And I was always looking for an outside perspective. In fact, I looked beyond having a black therapist for myself mm -hmm. because I wanted a different perspective, maybe on my attitude, my opinion, Okay. And I wanted it outside of being a black person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I felt okay. as a clinician that maybe I'd be doing myself somewhat of a disservice just to see someone just like me. Mm -hmm. That won't okay. help me globally. That won't help me help every type of client. Right. That won't help me see every type of issue I could see cultural, mm -hmm. diverse wise. Mm -hmm. So that's something I actually set out not to do, to have specifically a black therapist. So it's interesting to hear that. I know the comfort level is there, mm -hmm. but I never sought out... And I never go around people because they are. And I think uh, a huge part of the treatment process is to de to develop that rapport mm -hmm. with the person that you're seeing as well as vice versa. Mm -hmm. and, and if they automatically come in with their, you know what I'm saying, with the wall up, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and, and it's much easier if if I'm seeing a, a teenage young man, an African-American young man, and I got... My tats showing, and you know what I'm saying, and I'm speaking the lingo and all these things. Mm -hmm. He's able and to. And it's not come, forced. And it's not forced. It's just who I am. Right, right. I'm, I'm a professional, but I'm also Damien at the end of the day. And Damien is from the hood a little bit. I just oh, happen. Well, we know. <laughs> okay, so we have another. Um, we have like a question, a comment. Okay. And so they want to know more about ODD. So let's talk about oppositional defiant disorder. You touched on that a little, and okay. now they want to know. I think we need to talk about symptoms when you would actually diagnose it. What mm. is the difference between a child misbehaving and just needing some readjustment with um, motivation to fix behavior, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. a child who you would actually diagnose with ODD. I know I have my professional opinion, but I want to know yours first because you're the guest, and then I, I suspect Damien will come before me. I think for one, it's about the um, how often does it happen, how long does it happen, mm -hmm. but then also um, does it occur in multiple environments? Right. right. Or it, just one specific. Right. Or just one specific environment. Exactly. Right. Is it if it's just happening in this one teacher's class? Right. No. It's no, not. No. <laughs> it's not. A, it's that's not, not a disorder. Right. right. It's not a disorder. So I think those three things definitely need to be addressed first. I, agree. I I feel just like I feel with ADHD. I think it's over diagnosed um, because a lot of clinicians are not willing to do or, or go that extra the mile work. or do that work do to kind of yeah. dig in. Kids are going to present similar symptoms over a span of different diagnoses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if they experience trauma. They, they might fight, they may lash out, and they may not want to follow directions, you know. Mm -hmm. So from, from the outside looking in, just on a plain level, we'd be like, okay, this, this child is ODD. Okay, get him out of the office, that type thing. Let's do a behavior plan, and, and that's about it. Right. You know, right. instead of right. digging in and understanding, okay, well, his dad is incarcerated, you know, mom on drugs, you know, living with grandma, and she's about to die any day now, so you got anxiety or... All, all these different things going on um, to it. And that kind of, I guess, affects the way the treatment process is and how you actually plan to work with that client. And you're doing a disservice if you're not doing a full, not an investigation, but digging a little bit deeper mm -hmm, in, mm -hmm. into that person's life. Mm -hmm. And then, honestly, um, just to piggyback off, and not a, a kid doesn't have to have a, quote, unquote, dysfunctional home. Right. To have these issues, right? I came from a two-parent home. Me too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I still dealt with certain stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So I mean, we can't just you can't just put it on the kids from the hood or you know whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everybody has something going on with right. them at some point in time. Right. And then honestly, just growing up the way we grew up, uh, because I know you know black people have a lot of similarities with growing up. Be like, right. yeah, they're come with the the aspect of what goes on in this house stays in this house right. or you Ooh. have a lot of fathers that really don't know how to communicate about mm -hmm. emotions so young men are being taught to not communicate exactly. about emotions you have people telling kids young men oh suck it up you know move on you you can't cry 
Right. So all of these things play into, you know, just a lot of different issues when it comes down to mm -hmm. any health, any type of mental health challenge. And then you tend to start to internalize it because they're telling you to suck it up. Mm -hmm. Eventually, you're like a soda bottle. You're going to pop eventually. Right. Whether right, that's, right. you know, disregarding boundaries, whether that's not following directions, whether that's you, you just... Punching a hole in the wall, whatever the case. Could have just had a bad night. <laughs> exactly, like people have bad days, and mm -hmm. we may assess this kid, and he may be having a bad day today, and we or even a bad all, week, and we basing all of our information, our diagnosis on this one week. Yeah, yeah. Let me comment, um, so this doesn't get lost, in my opinion. <laughs> you know, I was waiting till y'all finish. So listen, so this is what I believe. I try to not diagnose kids with ODD. I really try to go around it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, if I'm trying to go around it and I believe it may be there, I would I would say we need to rule it out before I just label that. Right. Also, right. ADHD, the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, what I have noticed is that there are certain situations you can put little black boys in where they'll completely focus, like video games or like playing basketball outside with their friends, right. where they never come off the court. They never want to move from where they are. They're right. completely focused. They keep score. They know who just sat out. So they're very focused on what they want. But when they get into a certain teacher's classroom, this may be more of an intellectual, less severe issue, but more mm -hmm. of a, I'm not retaining the academic information because I'm not it interested. It could be that, okay? that teacher's approach to teaching that they may not I'm be. Or, touch on that. Or the I'm model touch of teaching, period. Right. Okay, I was going to oh, touch on that. That's okay. part of my response. Um, <laughs> that's ahead. okay. I appreciate the extra. So basically, <laughs> help me out. So what I'm saying, I'm receptive to it, mm -hmm. is that it could be the teacher. It could be the teacher's approach. It could be the academics. It could be the subject. It could be the parent reminds the student of the teacher they don't like or the teacher reminds the student of the parent that's mm -hmm. on their case. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of that has been an issue. Yes. I've noticed that a lot of kids that have come across my desk with ADHD, I noticed within a month, I would not diagnose that kid with ADHD. Mm -hmm. I start to get into the questions more of a, is, are, are, is it hard for them to sit still during class? Are they sitting on their foot a lot? Are they getting out of their chair a lot? Are they sitting back down? Are they biting their nails? Are they tapping? They, you know, mm -hmm. that's more so my concern beside right. they're not focused. Mm -hmm. um, what are they doing? Are they agitated? Mm -hmm. You know, how are they responding to other kids? Right. Things like that. So, and I think, go ahead. just as a clinician, mm -hmm. And, uh, and this goes for all of us, even, you know, if you, you learn those things about that kid, not being afraid to say, oh, I need to change this stuff. Mm -hmm. Sometimes clinicians, they'll like, they'll just ride it to the wheel. I change it all the time. <laughs> like, do an addendum yeah, to right, change right, the right, diagnosis. Exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. But I also tell parents that a mental health diagnosis is not law. Like, it's not something, it's not law. It doesn't stick forever. It doesn't have to. Right. You can, different clinicians may give a different opinion. So, mm -hmm. because your That's child is right. diagnosed with bipolar disorder or ODD, that can change over time. You may see symptoms change over time, and they may grow out of that diagnosis. Mm -hmm. I say grow out very affectionately. I mean, that's really what's happening. You can grow out of different phases of your life mm -hmm. and you can grow out of a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Environments are adjusted. People around yeah. you are taken away and added exactly. to the equation. Skills and that affects, and mm -hmm. that affects your Maturity actions. Level, mm -hmm. all those you guys are so helpful. Absolutely. Of course. Ready? Is there another question? <laughs> Jackie, does this lead to anxiety? Okay. Thank you for that. So you want me to answer? So, I appreciate that. Um, that was nice. We'll they saw they right. were struggling. We'll so, does it lead to anxiety? <laughs> okay, so remember we touched on last time, and I, I, I say we because I know you chimed in, you know, with the comment section the last time that mm. we had, when we had Dr. Jasper. Yeah, right. So, I touched a little bit on anxiety and parents kind of rubbing off their issues on their kids. Mm. I believe that it does touch on anxiety. I guess the question would be, whether she's asking about the parent or the child. Um, I believe adults in certain situations, the way they behave towards children can, can rise up the anxiety yeah, out of them, true. can yeah. bring out anxiety mm -hmm. from a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very timely. I usually like to arrive places minutes before stuff starts, 10, 15 minutes. I recognize at some point mm -hmm. that my son is becoming slightly tainted by that, right? Mm. He's like, you're going to pick me up at 2.30? 2.30, 2.30, right, mom? 2.30. If he sees me at 3 o'clock, he's like, I thought you said 2.30. And I'm like, eh. You know, in his mind, she ain't show up, right? right? right, right, right but right, I realize right. he might have, he might be getting that from me, 
I'm so aware of that. I want to curb it. So now I tell him if mommy's not there at exactly 2.30, I, I may need a little bit of time. Right. So now he's less on the impact of 2.30 on the dot. Right. I mean, he's literally looking at clocks. She's supposed to be here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm creating maybe an issue that, you know, I can get around. Mm -hmm. So I think we do that with teachers. I think parents do that when the kid comes home and they are complaining about the teacher mm -hmm. and the parent gets overly hyped up. Right. She did what? She did. I mean, it makes the child anxious when they return to school. Did she talk to my mom? Exactly. Is she going to talk to mom? Right. Will mom show up? Does the teacher know what happened? How I feel? Mm -hmm. And that, that can start that. I hope that answers your question, girlfriend. Bye, Jackie. Else? Any more questions just for Jackie? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Go so, ahead. So, I mean, uh, 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 how much time we got? We got about time five minutes. Keeping? Okay. But you said we're not pressed. Are you pressed? Five or ten? Okay, he's pressed. He got stuff to do. <laughs> he got a book and everything and walks and stuff. You know. Five to ten. <laughs> <laughs> he's got walks. So, so I, I guess... I guess this is a general question for us, not, I guess it's, it might be a stupid question, but no question is a stupid question. All right. Never. So do, do you feel like the work answers. that that you're doing is going to help reduce the stigma associated with mental health? I see it every day. Yeah. Honestly, um, even in the messages that I get from people, um, even from close friends, family, and right. then just even on mm -hmm. social media, yeah, because you know, I, I do, I have a large social media presence, and it's more so about helping individuals and mm -hmm. helping them understand certain things, right? But then also, I, I, you know, I live my truth via social media too on certain aspects. Now, I don't put everything on social media, but right. Right. <laughs> but you right. know, like yesterday, I did a post about why I work out. I mm -hmm. saw that. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. and in so. In the car, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm always in the car. I'm always in the car, <laughs> man. Oh, look, I'm, yeah. Either going to see clients or I'm heading to meetings exactly. or whatever. So I'm always exactly. doing something. But, mm -hmm. uh, and, but no, it. I had posted a workout on my Insta story and then somebody was asking me, yo, why you go so hard in the gym? Right. And I was like, I go hard, not just for the simple fact that, you know, you get certain endorphins and stuff released when you work exactly. out, mm -hmm. but it's the point about me being able to feel something. Mm -hmm. So I feel that soreness. I feel pain because I went through periods where I don't feel anything. Mm. So I lose all touch with any emotions or anything. So this is my safe way of doing that. Right. I was, yeah, right. I was about to say something about that. Yeah. So That's I mean, you know, safe way. right. Cause some mm -hmm. people, you know. I had I was talking to one of my frat brothers, man. He was asking me, he said, I don't understand why people cut. And I had to I had to explain yeah, the same thing. It, it was the same. Right. I was like, look, you have to feel something. Right. Like they cut to get that adrenaline rush and then they feel certain things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I, I, I used to do it on my motorcycle. I'm going down the highway hundred X amount of miles over the speed and just to feel that for adrenaline. The rush. Mm -hmm. Right, for the mm -hmm. rush. Cause you don't I don't always feel. Right. right. Wow. So like that's that's why I'm in the gym go heavy all the time. That's mm. interesting. I used to ride. Um, I used to ride um, on the back of a motorcycle in college. There was a dude I never dated who had a motorcycle. No, but the, so the adrenaline dude, rush. So, so you just but, used it for his bike. First of all, I used no one for anything. He offered a ride, and I was continuously. He just he <laughs> right, sure right, did. Right, right, we right, were right. friends, and I was the only girl that he would allow to ride at the school. We I went to Bennett, so I went to all girls school. And me and my group of friends know this, and the ones that are watching, they will know, and they know exactly who it was. And he was known for never having anybody ride his bike, and I was on the back of it. I had a good time going down the highway. Now, one time, it got a little, a little fast, and I was like, this ain't for me. But... <laughs> Mainly the adrenaline rush is something I look forward to. Y'all have I'm serious. I, know, no, no, say it, no, right, right, I didn't have the bike. It was somebody else's. Mm -hmm. But I got excited thinking about it. Like, I'm going to be able to do this. This is going to be fun. Right. And it was something I looked forward to because it was a rush. On the heels of what you're saying and what you asked, were you done answering? Because I don't want yeah, to yeah, check. Yeah, I'm done. Go ahead. Okay, but basically... I do believe that us talking about it openly mm -hmm. and me reaching out to people who create certain statuses, like when I inbox them and I don't even know them, I just kind of see who I'm associated with. I right. will reach out to them and say, hey, I saw this and are you okay? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I realize the first thing a lot of people are thinking is like, thanks for asking. And I'm saying, hey, I'm not trying to intrude, but I'm a right. therapist. So I recognize there's an issue here. Mm -hmm. 
when I started posting on social media, I know Dr. Jasper kind of messes with me about it. And he's like, Jackie, you're real aggressive on your statuses. And I'm like, yeah, I get real upset. And he's like, yeah, that's great that you're compassionate. You get aggressive though. And I say, yeah, but I get feedback in my inbox saying, hey, I took this medication. I took Prozac. I'm taking this. And they feel comfortable telling me that. And I'm glad that they do mm -hmm. because I noticed those right. changes. Right. People are responding different. Um, because we are putting things out. Right, right, I am definitely, saying things definitely. like, hey, if you're a parent that notices these things in your kid, this is what you need to do. People openly comment underneath asking me, okay, my kid is running them up. They're not listening. They're not going to bed on time. What do you think this is and what should I do? And I appreciate that they're literally putting it out there. Mm, and then I yes. can respond to them and everyone can read that has right, that issue. Absolutely. So I, I see the forthcomingness. Of right. these, these are individuals in the black community specifically mm -hmm. who are saying, hey, there are these problems in my home and I am not perfect. I'm mm -hmm. working my tail off and I don't know how to get my kid what they need. Mm -hmm. So I like the fact that I reach out to people, that's part of who I am, mm -hmm. and they reach back and say, hey, right. I've been taking this med for this amount of time. Right. And I say, hey, if nothing's working, maybe you should go back to your doctor and mm -hmm. let them know you need something mm -hmm. else. And that's mm -hmm. okay. Right. And a lot of us do not feel educated enough to challenge physicians, mm -hmm. medication management right. clinics, yeah. and mm -hmm. your own therapists. Right. Who right. may right. not be right. giving you at the time something that you need. Agreed. Right. Right. Agreed. So I just wanted to piggyback off that. Yeah, nothing, just like what you're saying, it, it, it creates a sense of community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we got away from. Absolutely. Um, we have to be able to help each other and, you know, um, address certain issues on mm -hmm. a community level. And then, mm -hmm. if, oh, if I don't know how to do certain things, if I don't know anything about finances, I need to find somebody in my community to help mm -hmm. me with finances. Same thing with mental health. It, it, right. It's the same thing. Right. Isn't it interesting the way people groom their bodies in the gym for physical health, but they don't? pay as much care and concern to their mental health, mm -hmm. which eventually affects the physical well-being exactly. mm -hmm. sooner than Absolutely. later. But then also, you also got to think about, too, a lot of times people don't don't think about the stuff that you're putting in your body that also affects your mental health. Absolutely. It's because you don't see automatic yeah. response. Right, right, But right, in the right. gym, you can see a tangible... We, I mean, we believe in what we see, right? Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm, guess mm -hmm. that has to do with right, my, right. mindfulness. And I've always said... Uh, that you need to watch what you digest. That's not only just food, but what you're taking in on a daily basis, right. what you're watching, what you're listening to, what you're giving your attention to. Right. You Put know, the phone down for an hour a day, man. Like, yeah, we, we, we look, talk look, about look, that. Look. <laughs> when, when are you supposed to be on a Look, I just feel fast? like this has become, I've been targeted. In we're not being episode. targeted. We're, we're, we're being friends to okay, check I mean, you and help you be the best. Oh, we friends now. You won't yeah, respond to text messages. I did respond. We friends now. You did. Halfway. <laughs> and then you compartmentalize my text messages. We're friends now. I can accept it as constructive. Okay. Yeah. They see. We, we already know when Jackie get like this, <laughs> it's about to end. Right, right, right. We, we well, already it's know. Anyway, it's we, five we minutes over. Know. But they're still tuned in, so thank you all for watching. Absolutely. Um, we want to tell them. Well, do you have anything else you want to add yeah, to our audience? Yeah, finishing comments and mm -hmm. closing remarks, all that good stuff. Um, don't be afraid to address any type of issues that you have going on. It's okay to talk about certain things. My shirt says, "Check on your." And I got strong uh, marked out. It's check on your friend. We always say check on your strong friend, but no, you need to check on all your friends mm -hmm. to see, you know, just, yo, what's going on today? Like, Absolutely. you know, anything you want to talk about. Any Like, just something simple like that. And then pick up the phone. A lot of yes. times we, we, we start yes. texting. And then, like, so pick much up is the phone, lost in like, that. So, so much. much is lost. Mm hmm and if you have time, you know, have a meet up and, you know, really get to sit there and be present with that person. Mm -hmm. Don't sit there and when you're with someone, you're texting the entire time and you're really right. not listening to what they're saying. Right. So, like, you know, just those small things. Do the small things and it'll lead to something major. Absolutely. Jackie? Mm -hmm. I don't have anything else to add. That was profound. Closing remarks? Anything for the people? Um, we want to know where to find the book. So tell them that again. Uh, everything is on my website, uh, dot com, And then also Eustress, uh, website is www.eustressinc.org. Wow. Your name is like 
so special that it can just be a first name dot com. Yeah. Like Madonna. Yeah, I, I use my, and then, oh, you can find me on all social media. It's just my first name. If you can spell my first name, you can find me. I don't we'll, have anything we'll to say sure about we that. We'll make sure we post it on there as well. <laughs> We'll definitely make sure we post it on there. Definitely. Um, no closing remarks? No, I would say thank you for joining us. Make sure to go to our YouTube channel, yes. The Couch 704, and hit subscribe so that you can catch all these videos after the fact. I would say share this as much as you can on your page because it's going to reach someone who needs it. Mm -hmm. um, if you know someone individually who has struggled with depression or any kind of symptoms you may be concerned about, just send it to them. You don't need to say anything. Just send it to them. Absolutely. Take a look. Anything mm. like that. I would say share it as much as possible. This is free information. We are all here on the platform that we care about the community and sharing mm -hmm. information. So we just need to do it as much as possible. And there just, we are. It was okay, just great. reconnecting. Great. So <laughs> just do your part since you're still there. Yes, absolutely. Again, we appreciate you guys. Final thoughts. You know, your mental health matters. So make sure that you check in with yourself. Become more self-aware. <laughs> And check in with your people, friends, family. Make sure we make this more of a community thing because you can't do it by yourself. Right? There was no one damaged or emotionally affected negatively by the content of this video. <laughs> <laughs> by no one, I mean me. <laughs> All right, y'all. We'll check right, on right, me right, later. Please. Yes, yes. Y'all take it easy. We'll see y'all next week. Have a rough week. day. Um, on the couch. <laughs> we appreciate Rayshawn stopping through. This yeah, is definitely thank you. very oh, no informative, problem. very fun. I appreciate it definitely, my man. All right, peace. All right, y'all take it easy. Bye. You going to come back?